today's marketplace, ERP systems are fast becoming a necessity for businesses of all types. In this video, we're going to show you a little bit about ERP and what it can do for your business. Here are some business areas where ERP is already in use. Human resource, asset management, supply chain management, privilege access control, marketing, customers and supply relationship, project management. Ed Hardy is a retail clothes brand label in New Zealand. They wanted to implement an ERP system to facilitate royal reporting, manage the retail environment, provide flexible reporting and to manage the customer loyalty program. They implemented Hansa World Enterprise in three months, ready for the first store to open. Ed Hardy plans to open several new stores in the future and the ERP system has been configured to grow with the business. To find out more about ERP systems, we come to talk to Murray Chandler, an accountant from Energy Australia. This business supplies gas and electricity to over 3 million people. They are Australia's largest energy network and employ more than 5,000 staff. To run a business of this size, ERP is absolutely essential and Energy Australia has recently introduced a brand new system based on SAP. Could you tell us the strategic value of an ERP system for Energy Australia? So the, the strategic value to Energy Australia is to provide a number of things. It's, it's to provide a system where people can go to uh, for uh, one source of truth. So there's one set of data, there's no ambiguity over it. It can be seen by different process areas. Uh, it also provides a common language for people to, to discuss and communicate items. So uh, with Energy Australia, we're a company with um, currently seven regions, uh, stretching from obviously Sydney through to the upper Hunter Valley. Uh, and that means that if everybody's talking the same language in terms of the systems, uh, there's efficiencies to be gained from those sorts of aspects. Mm. So when SAP was first implemented, which was only recently, was the aim to modify SAP to work within Energy Australia's business processes or were the business processes meant to be changed? Uh, the intent uh, very clearly was for Energy Australia to change to the business processes um, presented through SAP which uh, the intent was to move to best practice. And have you seen any evidence yet that uh, the change in business processes has had a positive impact on the business? Uh, certainly. and it, You see it quite regularly in meetings and, and discussions with individuals. Uh, we are seeing it probably more from a productivity perspective. Um, simple terms, we, um, we're able to leverage off the benefit of everybody being in the one system. Yeah. So if, if three different groups wanted a, a field computing solution, uh, we end up paying three times the cost that we would. How can SAP help Energy Australia save money? Uh, probably there's a variety of ways there. Um, productivity is a simple answer. Uh, if you look at what determines productivity, that's where your real answers come from. Um, productivity improvements could be just simply in regards to the support costs for a system. Uh, if we have 30 systems or 100 systems versus 5, our support costs will diminish. Uh, it could come in the forms of usability, uh, the ability to share knowledge quicker, communicate quicker, generate reports as standard, uh, a number of facets, but it all ends up being a productivity improvement to the processes we do. What did NG Australia do to implement SAP? And we partnered with um, a system implementer, in this case Fujitsu, to, to, uh, uh, to arrive at our configuration in SAP. Could you give us any indication of how much that cost? Uh, certainly uh, went into the tens of millions. Uh, it's, it's not a small exercise. What type of return on investment does Energy Australia expect from implementing SAP? We expect a huge return on investment. Uh, the timings of when we get that will depend on our constant and continual improvement processes. Uh, simply being one of the drivers was that 30-year-old uh, system that we had and some of the costs associated with maintaining that system and also the support cost for a mainframe um, were millions each year in just maintenance cost alone and support cost. So the return on investment um, isn't immediate but within a number of years recovering the cost and any future years after that um, getting a significant return on investment. Recently energy prices have been on the increase, mm -hmm. uh, do you see that as a permanent thing? At this stage we see it as, as easing off in the future. 
but it will stabilise at a level that's that's probably more significant than than has been in the past, uh, certainly in pricing. Uh, that's a bit of an unknown. There's a lot of external factors, um, you know, simple ones in terms of sustainable energy uh, sources. Uh, if that changes, it'll obviously change our pricing structures. Or close to it is um, electric cars. It will will significantly change the way we operate as a business. Um, with storage essentially being available to all households once everybody owns an electric vehicle. So the timing of that will certainly affect um, uh, the way we manage our business and the, the infrastructure program we require and that will obviously flow back to the customers as a, as a cost uh, or a, a cost decrease even. Right. Many of the ERP systems available on the market are quite expensive to implement but they aren't all that way. Open source software like a Dampier are free to download from the internet. Here's a demonstration of a few of the key features of a Dempierre, tailored to suit Energy Australia's business processes. Murray, we'd like to show you an example of how you can monitor inventories coming in and out of the business. Say for example, you're establishing a new substation for a client and the customer's funding all of the cable cost. With the ERP program, you can monitor how much cable you've ordered, where the cable is, when it's arrived, how much you paid for it and how much the customer will be paying for it. This ERP system allows you to instantaneously create a report showing exactly how much you've made on each job, uh, where your stock is and who's responsible for it. Alright, so Murray we've got, we've got an example here for some stuff that you might recognise. Um, in this first screen we've just made a purchase order, we're going to be buying some cables from a company named Olex and then this is just an example of the, the report that you're going to see. So this is the purchase order that we'd be printing out for, for whoever we're buying the cable off. Now once we've receipted it, we want to sell it to the company that we're building the substation for. So here we're making a sales order for a company here. And here's just an example. We'll put some, some examples of some, uh, some items that we might be using for the substation. So that's the report that you'd be sending to them as a sales sales order. So that's Enterprise Resource Planning Systems in a nutshell. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in Adempierre, a free open source ERP package, visit adempierre.org.